Hey, this is Will Buchanan. I'm walking all the way across the country to New Hampshire in search of more freedom on a project called the Walk for Liberty. Today is November 18th, 2008, day 195. It's absolutely breathtaking. Although this is quite beautiful, this weather, of course, comes with its own set of problems as well. Although I grew up in Indiana and am quite used to the cold and the snow, I'm not used to the specific breed of problems that using an RV in cold weather entails. And of course, Brooke, who grew up in Hawaii, is very inexperienced with matters of the cold and snow. As you may have seen a few days ago, we took all the steps we needed to to winterize our RV by draining the freshwater system in it. We decided though that we still want to be able to drain stuff down the sinks and be able to use the toilet. So we didn't completely winterize the holding tank system. At the very least though, we should have poured some RV antifreeze into the black water and gray water holding tanks. Since this morning, when we wanted to dump our system, right before we left the campground we stayed at last night, we discovered that the pipes coming out of each of the holding tanks were completely frozen through. Actually, it still probably would have been okay if we had dumped last night. It's just that it got cold enough for a long enough period overnight that the pipes had frozen. So anyway, after dropping me off to start my walk this morning, poor Brooke had to drive the RV back to the campground we had stayed at last night to try unthawing the pipes using a hair dryer and a space heater. And fortunately, she just reported back to me that the Blackwater pipe had successfully thawed out. So she got that all dumped and taken care of. And now is working on unthawing the gray water pipe. Needless to say, we've learned our lesson. And we'll make sure to keep antifreeze in those tanks for the rest of the winter. And as far as my personal take on this weather, Although I'm not a fan of really cold temperatures, I do absolutely love the snow. I guess I'm still kind of like a kid in that respect. Aren't you supposed to begrudge the snow for having to shovel it and drive in it when you become an adult? Anyway, not only do I think it's beautiful, especially after it's first fallen and there's an inch or two of it on the ground, but also, it's fun to play in. One thing that's not so fun, though, is dealing with it snowing when I'm trying to film my videos, or trying to look up numbers or make calls to local media outlets. It's not so bad if it's only cold, because then I just have my gloves or mittens to deal with. Or earlier in the year, if it were raining but a comfortable temperature, then I would just have my umbrella. 
But at this time of year, if it's both cold and snowing, then between holding up my umbrella to try to protect my electronics, and plus the fact that with the wind, it can often be snowing sideways, so the umbrella doesn't end up doing that great a job of protecting the camera anyway. Wearing bulky mittens to try to protect my hands, which are especially sensitive to the cold. Juggling the umbrella, plus my camera or phone with my bulky mittens. And if I'm doing a static shot, having to stop the timer on my GPS watch with my mittens. All the while trying to avoid trucks kicking up salty spray. Anyway, it can get a bit frustrating sometimes. So that's why I prefer to do my camera work when it's not precipitating. I don't want to sound like sour grapes though. Since it's certainly all worth it. Although it will be nice to get to New Hampshire and get settled in. Where I'll be able to do my filming without having to worry about walking 20 odd miles a day. I walked 20 and 3 quarter miles for Liberty today. Here are my GPS coordinates. If you appreciate what we're doing to spread the message of freedom on the Walk for Liberty, then please consider contributing to our work at donate.walkforliberty.com. Even a contribution as small as $3 will help. Again, that's donate.walkforliberty.com. This is Will Buchanan, signing off. Hey, it's the farm from the alternate present in Back to the Future. Hmm, but they established it one year before Back to the Future came out.